Ah, you obviously know Kung Fu. What's up, boys and clan? Joining me on the Kung Fu Driving Podcast today, I have an extra special guest. Uh, unless you live under an earth-bent rock, uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender, is uh, taking Netflix by storm. We have writer, producer, director, and actress playing the Avatar Kiyoshi herself, Yvonne Chapman here. Yvonne, thank you so much for joining the Kung Fu Driving Podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's great to have you. Um, the The show is uh, is all over the place on Netflix. It is all over social media. It's got to be an exciting time for you. What has uh, the reception been like for you so far? Incredible. Incredible. And we're just so happy that we finally get to share this with the world. Um, and it's now the fans and the fans have been responding really, really beautifully. So we're, we're thrilled. We're really excited about it. Well, speaking of, uh, of, of the fans, um, it's a, a much beloved uh, IP. Uh, everybody who grew up with the Avatar, the, uh, the animation, um, you know, knows it by heart, up and down, knows all the characters. Uh, Avatar Kiyoshi is, uh, is one of those characters that took on a life of her own after the, the series. Um, and what was, uh, what was your um, exposure to uh, Avatar before this and, and now after uh, you've been uh, in the uh, series? What, what is it like now? Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the original uh, cartoon. It's, it's so good. <laughs> I is. mean, anybody who's seen it like straight through knows it's, it's a fantastic cartoon. Um, so I was a huge fan of that. I've read the Kyoshi novels, which are great. Um, so I was, I was a huge fan of Kyoshi coming in. Um, so to be part of this, it's just, it's still surreal. <laughs> I, I still don't believe it's happening. Even watching myself on the show, I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, all, it's all the things and I, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm floundering right now, but. Well, let me, <laughs> yeah, let, no, let me go back to, to how this all happened because, um, according to all of your uh, your your bio info out there, uh, you've been acting less than a decade. So you know um, you come from the financial world, um, mergers and uh, acquisitions. Yeah. Uh, how did this happen? How how did this happen for you? You were in uh, a financial, um, you know, I, I assume a cubicle or an office of some kind, uh, and then you decided I'm going to go into acting, and now you are the Avatar Kiyoshi. I mean, life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm beyond grateful for this to have happened. Um, let me just say that for starters. But yeah, I started off in finance. I I was uh, born and raised in Calgary, and that's where I was working. Um, and I really I really liked what I did. Actually, I I did really enjoy my work being in finance. Um, but then I was doing this accreditation course called the Charter Financial Analyst Program. It's for those who know, it's it's this like really difficult studying um schedule for something like that basically i was studying every weekend every evening getting ready for this course and i just needed something else to have a stress relief <laughs> and for whatever reason my answer to that was to take on more studying so i took an acting class <laughs> um, <laughs> i don't know so take that for what it is but i i started an intro acting class i always loved acting ever since i was little um, I was in school plays and things like that, but I, it just didn't seem like a viable option for me, you know, as we go yeah, in that yeah. kind of trajectory of choosing something more pragmatic, more practical. And that's what I ended up doing. But I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of really want to revisit this, especially now when I just have so much going on. I just want something kind of just for me. Um, yeah. So I took this class and then I just fell in love. I just, I could not get it out of my head. Um, I took a leave of absence from work actually more thinking that I would go on the producing side first because I had a finance background. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just try that first and then I'll take acting on the side and see if I could do both and try this out. Um, and it worked out. And honestly, this is something I, I haven't really told much on other podcasts because it's it, we didn't really have you know the, the space to say it. But at that time, I was a year in into having packed all my stuff, moving to Vancouver, trying this acting producing thing out. And I had a leave of absence for about a year from my job. Wow. And yeah. And at the end of that leave of absence, I was like, you know what? This is, I mean, I had no idea what I was getting into. I, I didn't know anything about this industry other than the fact that I really loved acting. I really loved storytelling. And it was hard. It is hard. Um, and at the end of that year, I was like, you know, maybe I should just go back to finance. 
And I was so close to going back. I really was, but huge economic downturn. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Be because my job was basically to buy companies uh, for my company. Um, and there was no capital budget anymore. Our entire team pretty much got slashed. So I wow. was let go and I got a package and I took that as a sign of like, just keep going. That is crazy so, how life yeah. works out that way. It really is. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, to our benefit, of course, because you've done some amazing stuff. You were a uh, Jilan in Kung Fu. Awesome. Um, and then now you're uh, Avatar Kiyoshi in, in this. Um, and uh, it's it's such a, an interesting um, role that you've taken on, because like you said, Kiyoshi, uh, you know, well-known character, well, well-beloved. Um, and uh, can I just say that you look amazing as Kiyoshi? Let me, let, let me just show this off there. <laughs> Thank you. Look at that. <laughs> it's pretty but, cool. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty cool. Really, really cool. Um, and uh, now, when you uh, when you took on that role, uh, how did you get? Um, well, how did you get to the the role first of all? How did uh, how did you get approached to 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 be Kiyoshi? Um, I worked with Michael Goy, who's phenomenal, phenomenal uh, before. And having worked together, he approached me and saying, you know, like this role might be really good for you. And then when I heard of it, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> no further. But uh, thankfully, like you know, he he really um, he's the one who championed me for it. Um, so that's that's how it came about. And my God, I I owe him so much because <laughs> it's been an experience of a lifetime, and I'm just so grateful, so grateful. And I do have to give a shout out to the hair, makeup, and wardrobe people who work oh, so definitely. tirelessly, honestly, on on Kiyoshi. They are fantastic and. My God, it, like stepping into that created the whole the whole thing for me. It really did. Yeah, that's what I want to ask. I mean, the um the uh, the, the 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 fans are kind of fickle this way. You know, some are like, oh, it's too close to the the animation. Uh, it's not real enough, or whatever. But uh, and that's always going to happen with any live action adaptation of a of a beloved animation. But um, to me, those costumes are so on point and so cool looking. Um, the gear that you have on as Avatar Kiyoshi, I, I can't imagine that once you put that all on, you don't you don't just um, you know take on the role. You you have to become Avatar Kiyoshi in in yeah. some way, right? You can't not feel like a badass in that costume. <laughs> like, clearly, I don't look like that day to day. So. I mean... <laughs> It was just such a treat. And gosh, if, if everyone could see the amount of detail in that costume, layers, and just like even the smallest things, even the things that they knew fans weren't going to see because it was hidden underneath like three skirts, yeah. still had the details of her boots, you know, that they nice. can find, that they can yeah. scrounge up from any kind of source material. Like these kids, these guys cared so, so much. <laughs> Now, when you had all that gear on, um, you do some pretty amazing things in it. Uh, how difficult was it to kind of move around and kind of feel that flow? Uh, I, I mean, you know, there, without spoiling, you make a, a pretty impressive entrance and do some amazing things uh, in 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 the episode. So, what was it like to have all that? Was was it heavy? Was it was it cumbersome or anything like that? You know, it's interesting. It's like when you start putting on a costume like that, yeah, it does feel heavy because it's it's much more than what you would normally wear. But sure. then once you're kind of in it, like it was so well balanced out and like they really, when they were making it, they had that in mind too. So the way that the skirts lay, the way that the boots were, the way that it had certain movements in the wrists and everything was flexible enough. So I, I really didn't feel uncomfortable at all cool. um, doing any of the movement. Yeah, they really thought it out. And I asked that specifically because um, for uh, for fans of the the original animation, a lot of people uh, say that it's one of the most uh, faithful depictions of of martial arts uh, on screen. A, a nice representation of martial arts, despite the fact that it's an, an animation. Um, and you uh, have a martial arts background. You got to showcase a whole lot more of it in in Kung Fu, and I'll, I'll talk to that in a little bit. But um, uh, what uh, what did you bring uh, to Kiyoshi to give her that cool, powerful um, martial arts uh, expertise when you uh, when you brought her to screen? Honestly, I mean, this the stunt team really did the heavy lifting there. I mean, they were so detailed. Honestly, yeah, yeah, they were so, so yeah. detailed with the movements and everything. Um, and what I really felt that I had to bring the most was the attitude. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 
Kiyoshi's Kiyoshi's known for that, right? So <laughs> to me, that was like the utmost importance of like bringing the attitude to the movements. Yeah. Now, uh, talk to me a little bit about your your background because you do have a Muay Thai background, right? I do practice Muay Thai. Um, honestly, more on a recreational business. I've never mm -hmm. really done any, you know, fighting and in, in competitions or anything like that. But um, I try to keep active in it as much as I can. Um, <laughs> it's definitely helped for sure and translated. And yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what about the the rest of the cast on uh, Avatar? Uh, it looks like such a good group to to be a part of. Um, they the the guys that are there, uh, Ang and Cora and uh, Cora, not Sokka and uh, and Katara. Yeah. Um, those those guys are so good. Um, it's so nice to see uh, them pull those characters uh, off the uh, out of the animation and, and bring them to real life. What what, what is the uh, what was the camaraderie like when you were on set? Oh, they're wonderful. <laughs> they are so wonderful and i'm not look i'm not blowing smoke or anything like these they're incredible and it's like they walked off the cartoon let's be real <laughs> i'd be like can you find a more perfect cast for this it's insane yeah. but they're they're great they're super talented very professional very fun and just they're nice people that's what people <laughs> need to know they're nice people yeah uh it's awesome um the uh when you were on Kung Fu as, as Jilan, um, Brett Chan has been on the show. Do you yeah. remember you remember working with Brett? Of course I know Brett. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a legend. Of course I know Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you do some amazing stuff there. Uh, let me let me throw this up and take a look at that. That's you there in Kung Fu. I... <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just it, it's weird. It's only been <laughs> it's only been a couple of years, but that well, that's a throwback to season one. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, the uh, again, the action in that was was amazing. What what was it like working with uh, with Brett to get all, all that training in? Uh, because uh, uh, I've talked with Brett for a lot of the stuff that he's worked on before. He you know, he did the uh, the fight coordination on Warrior and some other shows. So yeah. uh, what was it like for you to uh, to get in some of that hardcore training with him? It's the best school. I mean, he's a heavy <laughs> hitter, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and I truthfully, before Kung Fu, I've never done like very, very minimally stunt work before. Yeah, yeah. This was the heaviest stunt work I've ever done in that kind of capacity. So it was a really steep learning curve for me at the beginning. And look, I was intimidated. I mean, to be part of that for sure. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And he he makes it a good experience, him and the whole team. Um, and even continuing forward throughout the seasons because they work so closely together. They understand like it, it, it was just a very collaborative uh, nurturing experience for someone like me who hadn't done any stunt work before sure. then. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> I want to do it again. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, hopefully uh, you get uh, a lot more uh, uh, opportunities to to bring Kiyoshi back to the screen and do some so. more cool stuff, right? I mean, uh, it's it's doing so well. It's all over social media. It's it's all over. Um, it's all over the uh, the commercials and and everything. Um, when uh, when you look at uh, what you guys have have brought uh when does it start to overwhelm you or has it yet you know it's that's a really good question because i think when you're in it you're just you're just trying to do the best work that you can um personally for me i think sometimes all all the other stuff is not something that is really in the forefront of of your vision at that point or like in your periphery because you're just kind of like well i i need to get the work done so when it does come it's like I don't know if it feels overwhelming in a sense. It's it's just really nice to see the response, if anything, um, and to see it get the recognition that it deserves for all the people who worked so hard on it. I, I, I don't know if that's really answering the question. I don't think I it know, feels yeah. overwhelming in any sense. It almost just feels like I'm just, we're just so happy to be able to share it finally, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, like you said, I mean, the reception has been great. Um, what are you What are you guys doing um, now? Are, are you guys um, like touring all over the place uh, and at premieres and things like that, just to uh, to to keep the word up? Because I see you guys, I literally see you guys everywhere. I, I can't open <laughs> up any social media and and not see uh, something going on with Avatar. So, what's keeping you busy? Well, you know, I think I think the main core of the group has definitely been on this crazy tour. Um, and experiencing the fandom, which I'm really, I'm really glad that they get to do that. Um, I'm currently still in Vancouver right now. I'm, I'm working on a project that I, I can't say anything about. Um, 
but <laughs> yeah, for yeah. me, I get to be here and, and do these interviews with you guys. So I'm really happy I get to do that too. Well, let's t let's get into that because you are a writer, producer, director. Uh, what other projects do you have that you can talk about uh, and that you can share <laughs> um, because like you said when you when you uh, left uh, the finance world you weren't necessarily thinking acting first you were thinking maybe producer yeah. uh, but now you're doing all kinds of things so what kind of things get that can you share with us Sure. I mean, I'm writing on a few different projects right now. I mean, hopefully something happens with them. Um, as we know this process it's you never know. You just keep trying to see if something can get made that that you love. So I'm writing with some really good friends of mine. And that's always been such a gift to actually share that space with somebody like that, that you're close to doing a few projects on that. Um, there's a docu series I'm currently working on that I shot a spec pilot with uh, with a really good friend of mine. Her name is Evelyn Kong. She works on uh, the podcast Reppin and it's basically yep. called yep. Reppin on the road and we're going to take it on the road. Um, so we shot the pilot of that in New York, um, and we're just hoping we can make more episodes of that. It's based and centered around talking to um, notable people who have made a huge difference in the lives of, of other people in their community and in an impactful ways. So we're hoping that we can get more of that going too. Oh, speaking of the the impact, uh, the impact of a show like Avatar, considering uh, what it does for representation, yeah, with with all of the uh, the Asian and the Indigenous people, uh, you know, in the cast, um, have you guys as a cast, uh, as a production, uh, have you realized um, what the possible impact of something like that is for those of you know, for the fans out there that are like, you know, the the Asian Indigenous fans are out there that are, that that want to see more of themselves represented on screen. Oh, definitely. And I mean, the message too, centering around Avatar is hope, hope and unity, you know, bringing these people back together within the cartoon. Um, I think it is incredibly important that we get to showcase uh, more representation, more people of different communities, because what you see is what you know. Um, and when you see something and know something, you start to integrate that into your everyday and it doesn't become other, it doesn't become foreign anymore. Um, so that is something that definitely we've taken taken serious consideration of. And we hope that, you know, people can watch this and see themselves and be proud. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys did a, a wonderful job on it. Um, so uh, has there been talk at all uh, about uh, bringing Avatar back for a season two? I know it's early, I know it's early, but have, have you heard anything potentially? <laughs> I honestly, oh, my headphones went off. Um, I honestly have not seen anything, truthfully, or heard of any, heard of anything yet. Um, that's all I can say, really. Sure, I, yeah. I hope so. I really hope that there's the book two and book three <laughs> coming soon. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, would love, I would love to see that personally. So I hope so. But no, I, I personally haven't heard or seen anything yet. All right. Well, that's good. I mean, it, the uh, like I said again, the reception has been amazing. So I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys uh, are able to move on to to more and more seasons, and would, that would be amazing. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to the Avatar fans, the original animation Avatar fans out there that uh, have been kind of on the fence about hopping on board to the live action? I mean, I hope you guys give it a shot. It's I I understand like the beloved. Um, OG is amazing, <laughs> but I really, <laughs> but this has done it justice in my opinion. And everyone has worked really, really hard and is so respectful of that original source material. I also do want to give a shout out. I, these earrings were made by a fan cool. that was sent to me and they're like, you yeah, like, I, I just appreciate the response so far that we've been getting and um, people seem to be loving it. So that's all we can really hope for. Yeah, I think universally, uh, from from the little I've seen so far, though, has uh, they've been super eager to see uh, you as Kiyoshi, um, just because the character is such an iconic character, and you you do her justice in so many ways. So Thank congratulations you. on that. That's so so great. Um, I, I'm going to let you go. I think uh, Morgan is is back with us. She I think she dropped out there for a second, but um, I do want to. Uh, do a throwback to uh something that uh you uh did as a kid uh in your uh, local rogers uh when you were sat down in a corner i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a quote as your sign off and let's see if you can if you can respond in the correct quote but i'm going to say uh yvonne will i ever see you again yes 
what's happening? <laughs> <I'm> like, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm just so curious about what this Rogers thing is. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, backstory for everybody who, who, who doesn't know. Um, when, uh, when Yvonne was a, a wee little one, uh, she used to go to her Rogers video store and uh, she would always ask to watch one particular movie. What was that movie? All dogs go to heaven. All dogs go to heaven's correct. And the, yeah, the uh, the quote from that was uh, Charlie, will I ever see you again? Oh, that's right. Oh my God. I was like, I was, my head was spinning. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> yes, my mom would take me all the time to Rogers video. We sit down, they had a popcorn machine. I just like plop myself down. I'm like, all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> that was... Man, that's a throwback. Yes. Uh, that's awesome. Well, uh, Yvonne, I, I do hope to see you again. Uh, I do hope to see Avatar Kiyoshi again. I hope to see the entire cast of Avatar The Last Airbender again. You guys uh, are doing an amazing job. And uh, the reception is there for you. The fans are there for you. Let's hope that we get more uh, and you get to come back and, and play with us again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Hup. Poison clan rocks the world.